Welcome to France 2022, the campaign, our daily show covering the presidential election. Now, today we're going to be examining the so-called McKinsey affair, an issue that President Macron's opponents have described as a scandal. The incumbent is under fire for paying expensive fees to management consultants for their services in the public sector. But Macron's opponents say he should have given precedence to France's highly trained civil servants. France 24's Shirley Sitbon tells us more. Its name has rocked the campaign. McKinsey. Un milliard. Un milliard. C'est un vrai scandale d'État. Il ne paye pas d'impôts. Il y a des zones d'ombre. Je trouve ça scandaleux, vous voyez. McKinsey is one of the consulting firms used by the French government to improve its decision making. But the fact the money used for those firms has increased under Emmanuel Macron raised a flag and triggered a probe. Great material for the French president's rivals. En gros, des gens qui euh, prennent votre montre pour vous donner l'heure, qui euh, font de beaux PowerPoint, qui essayent de vous montrer comment on peut faire mieux avec moi. Et alors, en réalité, le contribuable dans cette affaire se fait plumer trois fois. C'est des contrats extrêmement onéreux. Deuxièmement, Ces gens ne payent pas d'impôts, en tout cas pour ce qui est de McKinsey. Et troisièmement, souvent, leurs conseils servent à faire baisser la protection sociale et euh, les services publics. Like deciding people should work longer to get their pensions, cutting teachers' benefits and subsidies for people with low salaries. Pour organiser les choses, non, il a préféré aller chercher un cabinet privé. On ne sait pas vraiment à quoi ça a servi, mais en tous les cas, nous, on n'en a pas vu la couleur, ni même les effets positifs. Donc, some candidates say there are also conflicts of interest. C'est arroser en fait un certain nombre de gens qu'on connaît bien hein, et à qui voilà on va leur donner des petits marchés parce qu'il y a tout ça aussi. C'est, c'est de la connivence, c'est de la c'est, 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 c'est tout un monde euh, qui euh, qui parasite en réalité, qui parasite euh, euh, le budget de l'État. Je demande au parquet financier d'ouvrir une enquête. Mais on est dans quelle démocratie Cette affaire était étouffée. Mounting criticism has started tainting the French president's campaign, but to him, consulting with top experts is the best thing a government can do. Quand on veut accélérer, aller très vite et très fort sur une politique, il faut parfois avoir recours à des prestataires extérieurs à l'État. Je ne vais pas moi justifier de chaque contrat. Je ne les connais pas. C'est pas moi qui les ai passés. That is all from today's campaign trail. Meet again tomorrow, same time. Okay, well, let's take a look at how all the candidates are doing in the polls. Here's a survey uh, by IFOP Fiducial, which uh, came out today. And there you can see uh, Emmanuel Macron leading uh, the pack with 28%. Uh, Marine Le Pen in next position, 21%. That's down very slightly on uh, what we've been saying in the last day or two. Uh, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, the leftist, in third place. He's uh, gained fractionally in the polls, as has Eric Zemmour in fourth place. Valérie Pécresse, however, who's in the fourth place, is, uh, sorry, in the fifth position, is down uh, by half a percentage point or so. So that's how things look in the first round of the presidential election. Let's have a look at the second round. Uh, And according to the latest projections, Emmanuel Macron is on track for 54%. Uh, He's still expected to face off against Marine Le Pen once again, and she's on track to uh, capture about 46% of the vote. That's down very slightly uh, again on the day before. So that's how things stand in the second round. Well, I'm joined here in the studio by our campaign commentator, Angela Diffley. Angela, uh, welcome to the studio. Help us understand uh, why this consultancy saga, if you want to call it that, is so problematic for Emmanuel Macron. Well, the Senate inquiry found that in the period between 2018 and 2021 that the government had doubled the use of outside consultancy firms and had paid around a billion euros uh, on outside consultancy firms. Of those, one of them, McKinsey, the American uh, well-known consultancy, was paid 12.3 million alone just for its work uh, during the COVID crisis. A lot of that was around uh, rolling out the vaccine program. Now, a number of countries do use outside consultancies, and there have been a few controversies in other countries about their use during the COVID crisis, but it's particularly frowned upon in France. McKinsey's also, it must be said, pays little or no tax in France. Now, it's not uh, tax evasion, it is tax optimization, that is to say that they 
cleverly exploit loopholes and it's all entirely legal, but the optics aren't great already. The other thing is uh, the French have this highly trained civil service. They're constantly told that their civil service is the envy of the world. That might be a surprise to some uh, UK viewers who are also constantly told their civil service is the Rolls Royce of the planet. But either way, they have a highly tra trained civil service. People are wondering why they couldn't do this job. And and taxpayers have effectively paid twice. They're paying their civil servants to do these jobs and they're paying again for outside consultancies. There have also been allegations of cronyism that uh, perhaps these contracts were given out to uh, business associates. There's no evidence of that at all so far, but this is an election campaign. Obviously, rivals are going to make the most of it and uh, push that idea. And, of course, it's really important to remember that uh, this is happening against a background... These these are huge sums of money, and it's happening against a background of today 5.1% 5 5 5 inflation, record inflation levels. People are really struggling to make ends meet uh, in, in France. And so all of this, these huge sums of money uh, are posing a bit of a problem for the French public. And how much do we think all of this is going to damage the French president, the incumbent? Well, first of all, uh, Macron's team didn't really seem to wake up to this. I think they thought it wouldn't gain traction and that it was uh, too boring an issue, really, for the public. Uh, it has done, and largely because campaigns are about spinning, they're about selling a narrative, and this feeds into the narrative of Emmanuel Macron, president of the rich, who doesn't understand that huge sums of money uh, are, are not uh, normal for ordinary people. He doesn't understand the optics of it. And his team have suddenly woken up. Marine Le Pen is framing this debate as, I'm there for the little guy, you are president for the elite. And increasingly, as it looks as though uh, polls, as we've just seen, suggest that uh, the second round will be Marine Le Pen next to uh, Emmanuel Macron, she is setting that at, this up as a debate about cost of living, people with no money, and you are the president of the rich. 75% of people in France think this uh, presidential election is already sewn up. And so that could be problematic for Macron. Uh, some of his voters might decide not to show up. That could also be a problem for Marine Le Pen and all the other candidates as well. But it, it is, uh, there are signs that Macron's team are getting a little bit worried uh, and that they have realised that the shine from his Ukraine diplomacy is starting to wear off and he needs to get into the fray and talk about cost of living uh, measures. He's actually announced a 25 billion euro package to help ease cost of living issues. Uh, but it's getting a bit lost under... Uh, Marine Le Pen's onslaught on that uh, matter. OK, well, thank you very much indeed for that. Our campaign commentator, Angela Diffley, thank you very much indeed. In the lead-up to the presidential vote, we're going to be taking the pulse of the country. Our France 24 team has been crisscrossing France, meeting voters to understand their daily lives, their concerns, and as you'll see, their ideas for the future of the country as well. They've just met up with Nathalie de la Chapelle, who is a self-employed nurse in the Picardie region of the north of France, and they've been following her on her daily rounds. Let's take a look. I've been a self-employed nurse since 2003. I got my nursing diploma in 1989, and I worked for the public hospital in the city of Cré until 2000. I keep this little reference to the Yellow Vest movement in my car. I joined the movement because of what was happening in my life and in the lives of my patients and my family. I got the feeling that the people at the top vote in laws for themselves, but not for us at the bottom. On top of that, as I'm over 50, I know how much I can expect when I retire. It's a major slap in the face. Bonjour, jeune homme. Vous allez bien? Bah oui, et vous? Ça va, très bien. And how is your neck on the other side? How's the pain? It's the same. Why? Luckily, they do house visits. If they didn't come by, I'd be in trouble. It's a job that I don't think gets enough recognition. 
But we get recognition from our patients. We know them and their life story. In a way, they're like members of our family. Working at the public hospital, I feel like the treatment became dehumanized. It became all about output treating a human being in a dehumanized way. I couldn't do it, so I quit. I left. I love my job. I love the fact that I can still manage to do it. But unfortunately, the way I see things evolving, the way I see my profession transforming, it's becoming more technical. It's taking a turn that doesn't suit me for the future. If I were president, I would bring back the human aspect to public and private hospitals. I'd stop the race for profitability and the pharmaceutical lobbying. I'd create a constituent assembly to give the power back to the people so that they can be masters of their future. Well, that's it for this edition of France 2022, the campaign. Do join the team tomorrow, 8.15 Paris. I'm here on France 34 for the next episode.